Wednesday afternoon and helping seniors of Brevard is getting underway here in just a moment. I'm John Harper and Jennifer Barton, who's uh, filling in today for Carrie Fink. Jennifer, it never fails that uh, every time we play that music, everybody in the studio kind of <laughs> likes to dance around. Absolutely. You can't help but move to that music. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. But anyway, we want to get to some other good stuff, and that's today's show. Jennifer Barton from the Board of Directors of Helping Seniors of Brevard is here to host the show for today. And Jennifer, you got a special guest? I do, I do. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's great to be here on behalf of Joe Steckler and Carrie Fink. Uh, welcome to the Helping Seniors of Brevard show. It is, it is wonderful to be here. Today we are talking about the best of home care. And we're talking about uh, seniors helping seniors uh, as part of our, our at-home care. But I have a wonderful guest today talking about best of home care. I have Terry <coughs> Brandt from Buena Vida Estates. Welcome, Terry. Well, thank you for having me. What a pleasure to be back. Um, I am from Buena Vida Estates, and it is a wonderful place to live. So there we're going to go. talk about seniors today and how to help them every day. Absolutely. So we're talking about with seniors helping seniors, we keep people at home. And then when they when they can't be at home anymore, or maybe they would be better off served in a community setting, then Terry can take them at Buena Vida and um, make sure that they are in a great spot. So we have lots of things to talk about today. But first, I'd like to start with um, some helping seniors updates and some senior resource center activities that are going to be going on in January. First, uh, you might want to get your pencil and jot these things down. We're going to have Food Truck Tuesdays. So uh, starting off February or January with a bang, we are going to have uh, January 2nd, we're having Comer Fuego come out to the Senior Resource Center, 11 to 1. You can come out, have lunch, grab some lunch downstairs from the food truck, Comer Fuego, and then come on upstairs, have a, have a seat in the, in the lobby, sit, eat with friends, socialize. 10% of the proceeds go to helping seniors of Brevard County, so it's a fun fundraiser uh, a great way to start off the year with some uh, delicious food and camaraderie so we'd welcome you to come out to do that with us I did look up Comer Fuego's uh, menu menu and oh yeah we be in <laughs> delicioso <laughs> I will try to behave myself wait a minute what's on the menu oh lots of um, empanadas and burritos and tacos and it looks fabulous great yes so you've got to make a plan to come out and, and see us that Tuesday. Tell your friends. That uh, sounds like fun and some good eats and some good information. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and our next <laughs> our next adventure um, in January that we have is on January 25th at the Senior Resource Center. Care Plus and Omni will be presenting Start Smart making a healthy change. So starting off our new year with some health and wellness tips to make sure that we are going into 2024 healthy and happy. You're all invited to that event. Again, that is January 25th. It's 11 to 12:30. We uh, have a special presentation, um, advances in memory care and a dementia live simulation. And if you've never done that, it is a very interesting uh, Dementia Live, very, very interesting program. Um, if you have someone in your world who has memory loss or dementia uh, now or in the past, it, it really is a very informative program that helps you understand. And I think that with understanding comes a lot more empathy um, exactly empathy. And I think it opens your eyes to what they are going through. It's a wonderful program things that you don't even think about that they might be struggling with it shows those things right absolutely and i i've i've been through uh the virtual dementia tour several times and each time i come out with something a little mm -hmm. bit different and a little more empathy for uh different aspects of, right. of what someone might go through um and not even just dementia but um, macular degeneration or neuropathy Parkinson's. exactly things things that we take for granted um that that 
they might have some situations with and it, it just helps us to be able to not only communicate um, but understand and and change what we do to make things more successful for them so that's a, a, yeah, a wonderful don't miss that that's when is that thursday on what date that is uh thursday january 25th um 11 to 12 30 so we'll hope yeah. to see you there at the senior resource center so upcoming events we'll remind you right before we leave two of those events uh but now i want to get into terry uh both of us being in the in the senior uh, yep. industry we see um a lot of seniors during the holidays that unfortunately may not uh, holidays may not be the Mm -hmm. happiest joyful time of the year that tv and movies say that it should be right and i think it makes it even worse sometimes to see those things when you're in a situation where you're just feeling lonely and maybe a little depressed Absolutely. And um, I think as we get a little bit older, we, we have more life experience, but we also have uh, the unfortunate opportunity to maybe have lost someone mm-hmm. uh, during the holidays. And no matter if that is yesterday or if that's 10 years ago, the holidays always seem to bring back those memories um, just a little bit more poignantly. Right. And I think human nature will say that you just want to stay home or you just want to be isolated which can be sometimes the worst thing for you you know just even sitting and talking to somebody or having other things around you um, whether it's somebody like seniors helping seniors where they're coming in to just do a puzzle with you or do something together or it's in a community like Buena Vida where you have other things going on just making that effort to put yourself out there a little bit and to be out there right to keep yourself be present absolutely absolutely and i think you know on on the flip side of that Mm -hmm. sometimes if you've got the personality like my mom and i who um we feel like we have to do everything. You have to be right. Out you have to be doing. You, you've, we're gonna. Can you we're say gonna, type A? It <laughs> maybe a little bit. Apple didn't fall far from the tree there. <laughs> so we're gonna do every single thing that we've always done for the last thirty years, and then we get totally overwhelmed. Right. And so maybe stopping and taking a step back and saying it's okay not to do everything that we've done in the past and it's okay to take some quiet time for ourselves and and to sit and relax and uh, knowing that tomorrow will be a better day right it's always good to um, think of yourself first sometimes and even though that isn't in our DNA a lot of the time um, especially as moms as grandmothers you want everything to be perfect Um, There are certainly times when you just need to step back and say, I need today for me. Absolutely. Do a little little self-care. And and speaking of self-care, was that in your vocabulary, those words, self-care, was that ever in your vocabulary even 20 years ago? Never, self-care. So that is something, um, self-care is not just for 20-year-olds or 30-year-olds or 40-year-olds. Seniors need to practice Mm self-care as well. One of the, the things that we wanted to talk about today with, with uh, self-care, uh, because we are coming up in just days, 2024, New Year's Day, New Year's resolutions. Happy New Year. Oh my goodness, already. Where did the, where did the time go? So we wanted to talk about that concept of seniors and self-care and some New Year's resolutions geared towards seniors. Sounds good. Absolutely. I think we can all learn from that, whether we're just beginning to be seniors or we've been seniors for a while. And we're speaking from experience, <laughs> are we, Terry? <laughs> so we, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting closer and closer. Mm-hmm. So we have a little list that, that uh, we created from a very a variety of different sources, and we want to go down through them. And these are our senior-related New Year's resolutions. Um, Think about each one as we go down through and see if it applies to you and if it's something that you'd like institute for 2024. Uh, The first one I definitely need to do, Terry, and it's (laughs) eat more nutritious foods. As we just talked about the cookies that are still left over from Christmas. (laughs) This is the week to get rid of all of those things in the fridge. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The, the, The guys at the radio station said that they would take them for us. 
if, if oh, we have. Oh, I'm sure. I'm, we're watching them right now, and they're shaking their heads. <laughs> Eating chips. <laughs> so this week, go ahead. Get rid of all that stuff. And, and Terry, it's sad because we know we need to eat nutritious food. And one of the things that we do at Seniors Helping Seniors is we make meals for people. And we pride ourselves on making homemade, nutritious mm. meals that they can have for that night. And then have some leftovers, a healthy TV dinner that they can put in the freezer and have another night in the future. Um, and I'm sure you have wonderful, fabulous food at Buena Vida. We do. We have a wonderful chef that's been there 12 years. And he... Um, prides himself with making sure that there is nutritious, delicious food. Um, But I think that's the struggle, right? When you're at home, um, if you don't have seniors helping seniors coming in and helping you, um, just hint, hint, you need to look into that because um, they can do it for a little or a lot, right? Exactly. A little bit or a lot. But It's so easy to just grab something from the store, from your counter, shelf, whatever, that's not healthy. Um, And I know when I'm by myself, that's what I tend to do. And it is, it's something that you have to plan. It's something that you really have to work at to make sure that you have the fruits in your your refrigerator, that you have the um, proteins, that you have the vegetables that are fresh. Um, And sometimes we all need to take a look and make sure that those carrots aren't haven't been sitting there too long or something like yes, that but yes, yes. The, the vegetables sit in the fridge. priority <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yes we can at seniors helping seniors we can definitely help kind of that pre uh, pre-planning mm-hmm. and, and, the, and the cooking the the prep cooking as I call it a lot of times on Sundays when I'm really on my game I do prep cooking for the week so that I don't have to grab something unhealthy or grab mm-hmm. McDonald's on my way through I can ha- I can hum- come home to a healthy healthy meal and so you, you know at seniors helping seniors we can help you do that at home but Buena Vida can help you do that you know uh, every day while you're there breakfast lunch and dinner correct uh, well we do a continental breakfast and then our residents that our independent residents have one meal a day but what's nice they can choose lunch or dinner so it's on their schedule and every apartment has a full kitchen so the same applies to them um, all of us whether we're in a home or in our apartment or anywhere just kind of planning a little bit there you go some pre-planning so the next one I love, the next one on our list, if you notice, if you go down through the list, exercise more was not on the list because <laughs> we all say that we're going to do that and how many gyms are absolutely chuck full in January and then by February they're empty again. So we're taking a stand. We're not going to have that on our list. No, but number two is move joyfully. How fun is that? I love that. It doesn't matter how slow you are or how, how quick you are how little or how much you can always be joyful absolutely and and think about go back to when you were a kid what did you like to do what was your favorite activity as a kid Um, riding my bike was number one I think but I loved lying and it's not moving a lot but as little ones we're always moving around when we're lying down but lying down on the grass and looking up at the clouds oh my gosh what a wonderful thing that would be so if you if you have a hard time getting up that might not be the number one thing to do but maybe have a partner that could a friend that could be there to help you get up and how joyful would that be as you giggle trying to get up off the ground oh absolutely (laughs) looking up at the stars in the evening maybe that would be a wonderful activity what a joyful activity that would be yeah and it does it gets you moving a little bit but you could also get that bike back out or maybe a recumbent bike right. or a stationary you? bike. Your favorite? Oh, I love to swim. When I was okay. little, I loved to swim. So that's my goal is to get back in a pool, mm-hmm. you know, and it doesn't have to be an Olympic size swimming pool and, and doing 18 laps. It could be just getting in and, and having fun in the pool. Right. So let's think about that, you know, as you're, as you're looking towards 2024, what did you have fun with and how can you incorporate that in your lifestyle? And it will just naturally include more movement. So we're not going to say, oh gosh, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to go to the gym for an hour every day. No, let's just incorporate some joyful movement into your 2024. Not to belabor it, but I'm thinking about just walking around your home or walking around an apartment complex where you live. Um, How wonderful is it in Florida that we have all everything's blooming this time of year so just being outside and walking just by walking you're going to be moving and then just joyfully 
um, being able to see the flowers and the blue sky and the things that not everybody in this country has in December and January. For exactly. Sure. My, my friends up north are probably not going to be enjoying many walks outside right. this winter time. Right. So we really are blessed to have that. And maybe grabbing a friend, mm-hmm. a neighbor, you know, someone next door to, to walk with. That would right. be a wonderful thing. So number three, learn something new. How much fun is that? Learn something. It could be anything. So we're to, not talking technology. You well, don't have it could to do be. technology. <laughs> Maybe it's learning <laughs> how to use your cell phone or or your laptop. Or we got my dad a new tablet for Christmas, okay. so he's he's going to be learning this brand new tablet system uh, versus the one that he's used to. So that's going to be his learning something new this year. But uh, I just took a watercolor class and I had so much fun with that because you don't have to be very skilled. And I've seen a lot of things where you take a little circle and it becomes just with a little water, that circle becomes a Christmas tree bulb and just some really fun ideas that it doesn't take a lot of effort and you don't have to be terrific at it, but just watching what you're creating. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And, and one of my one of my friends uh, says, you know, be brave enough to stink at something new. Right. What you know? Who That's cares? That's a great philosophy. Yeah. Let's just try it. Let's do it. We um we have a group of friends that started doing. Uh, speaking of technology, Duolingo. There's an app for that. It's a it's a language app so we're learn. i'm learning french one of my other friends is learning spanish somebody else is learning oh, german for you um and it's just a little bit each day mm-hmm. but what fun that has been and now it's kind of become a challenge because you know you don't want to skip a day because then you lose your streak <laughs> so it's and you might forget what you learned yesterday <laughs> exactly. if you're not doing it every, every day and, and what a great thing all of those new those new things that we're learning the painting the languages uh, new technology what a great thing that is for our brains and to keep our brains healthy instead of just sitting on the sofa and watching tv or watching something you've already seen so yeah you know people will say well i do the crossword puzzle every day well if you've done the crossword puzzle every day for the last 40 years that's not learning something new that's something that you've got in you already and in order to keep those brains healthy, we want to try to uh, do something new and creative and help those synapses. So learn something new. Learn be, something be bold. new. Be brave. Number four, and here's, I, I would say, you know, being social, but make time to spend with some friends that you've had that maybe you haven't nurtured the friendship or uh, be brave enough to make a new friend. I love that. I bet that happens at Buena Vida all the time. It does. It's really fun to see someone coming in and how the residents that live there just embrace them. They know they're new and they just want to make them feel comfortable and say, you know what? We were new. We want you to feel comfortable. And there are some that don't want, I mean, not everybody's social. Not everybody wants to have a conversation all the time. And there is that, but they'll understand that pretty quickly that they're, you know, okay, I'm nice to meet you but I'm done Um, but there are it's just a very warm feeling when you see somebody I was talking to one of your residents over in the cottages Mm -hmm. um, a couple weeks ago now and she was talking about how you know when everybody moved into the cottages everybody was new and so they all got to know one another and they've they've she felt like they've kind of become a family and they look out for one another and she just uh was loving it she really really was encouraged and loving it and I think she had lost her husband um and and felt so um nurtured and Mm -hmm. cared for going through that process because she had people with her and checking in on her and and that's what they've been doing for one another over there so what a what a wonderful testament that is to the family that Buena Vida has created and they do and what's really interesting when we built those cottages we said this is the one time that you could move in your best friends with you like call your friends and tell them to come they can be your neighbors because everybody most people have been in a new neighborhood where everybody's moving in and I think that's just the bond that you have and so that that's what happened at Buena Vida in the cottages but I see it even in the apartments and we've been there 41 years and to see new people coming in and how 
the residents that have been there, some of them have been there 22 years, and how they want to invite and want to welcome the new ones coming in. Which so is wonderful. wonderful. That yeah. is that is wonderful. But even if you can just call a friend, call somebody that you haven't talked to in a long time. What a great time of year to just reconnect and say, hey, I've been thinking about you and um, give them a call. Absolutely. Because I know I would love that if someone right. called and said, hey, I, I haven't talked to you in so long, but I just wanted to reach out and say I was thinking about you. How heartwarming is that? It just makes you smile all day when you think about it. Absolutely. So whether you're the receiver of the call or, or you're the one that's picking up the phone, it's definitely worth it. Yep. It's the next one. Boy, here we go. (laughs) Organize your life. Declutter. Ugh. That's a tough one. (laughs) So I've been in my house five years now. Okay. Unbelievable. Um, And just in five years, I'm surprised at how much stuff I have collected. Just Mm -hmm. in five years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my, my mom used to have a saying, and I'm sure that goes to my grandmother and um, way before us, um, but the um, a clean house is a sign of a, a clean mind. Mm-hmm. And there is something to be said There's, about well, that. Well, it's like making your bed in the morning, right? Maybe start there. Just exactly. make your bed. And I think um, we see it with residents moving in that are leaving a home that they've been in for 25, 35 years. It's totally overwhelming to think about moving. But we're talking about just doing it on a daily basis, just in your home, right? right? Maybe start with that refrigerator or the bed, making a bed, and just start small. And the feeling of, oh, I did that. Exactly. I just wiped down my refrigerator and cleaned out all the drawers, and I'm a happy camper. And look how beautiful that is. <laughs> it doesn't have to be overwhelming. No, and you know, that's something that we help with at Seniors Helping Seniors all the time. And we, we have um, a lot of fun doing that. We'll clean out a closet. Okay, we're just going to take one closet, um, or maybe even a section of the closet for each <laughs> visit, and go through, and there's so many memories, memories that, that come out. Yes. Uh, sometimes we're doing the fashion show of, okay, what fits and what doesn't fit, and what, you know, oh my gosh, that looks fabulous on you. These are years old yeah. that's not on you know that's not in style anymore we need to go ahead and donate that <laughs> again overwhelming but wonderful things that you're doing on two different levels you're decluttering but you're also looking at things that maybe you haven't looked at in a really long time and there's some great memories there yeah. and then donating those things to a worthy cause is a wonderful thing as well there's so I'm many sure great helping seniors here. um helping seniors at Brevard probably have resources that they could give medical equipment uh, durable medical equipment and and clothes you know there are so many organizations um that will take the clothes and make sure that they go to you know a family in need need. or you know a a woman that's that's getting back on her feet or lots of different people so in in the next section we'll we'll keep going through the list and then we'll do a couple reminders of upcoming events Uh, we'll be back soon with terry brant from buena vida states 12 34 in the afternoon here on 90.3 fm you're listening to helping seniors of brevard heard every wednesday 12 noon to one o'clock right here on 90.3 fm i'm john harper and let's get back to more of the program with your host for today jennifer barton and her special guest it is wonderful to be back. I am Jennifer Barton with uh, Seniors Helping Seniors here on behalf of Helping Seniors of Brevard County, a wonderful organization that provides resources for our Brevard County seniors and a, a lot of information, trying to get out information here on the radio station, on TV, through the Helping Seniors newsletter tucked conveniently inside Senior Scene Magazine. And some of what we're talking about today is, you know, the education for seniors. And and today we're educating about New Year's resolutions because you're never too old for a New Year's resolution and to practice self-care. And that's what resolutions usually really are all about is what can we do uh, to make things better for our lives in 2024 so thank you terry brant for being here with me and thrilled to be here well thank you and, and the the next one on our list is is something i think every senior at one time or another or all the time has has a problem with <laughs> sleeping better getting better sleep so i don't know that we're going to solve the problem we might not. But we could maybe give some ideas of how to get ready to sleep 
better. Ab- absolutely. And and one thing that comes immediately to my mind, which I'm totally guilty of, and, and I laugh because I think that this is something that we think about for kids, kids, grandkids, is... Um, reducing screen time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but how many of us as adults are still guilty of either playing on our phones or on a tablet or watching tv and having that screen time before bedtime which we all know they say not to do not to do i've gotten in a habit of reading and it works wonderfully i get my glasses on and i open a book and it's usually about two pages and i falls on my lap well and you know that's one of <laughs> that's one of the things on our list is to read a book that's so right. you, you could actually kill two birds with one off. stone yeah yes so read a book and fall asleep naturally fall asleep naturally absolutely yeah. i do use a little white noise mm-hmm. that seems to help a little bit yeah i think just getting yourself ready to go to sleep maybe is one of the key things like you said stopping the screens um you know, just kind of putting yourself, maybe putting on some soft music and getting yourself ready for bed and then just And being sticking more to calm. that routine. Yes, yes. Because Lord knows, you know, TV right before bed, if you're watching the, the, the nightly news. news. <laughs> oh, no, don't do that to yourself. <laughs> we have... That two- won't calm you. Yes. I, I, I see too many clients where we go in to do an assessment and that's one of the issues is they're watching Channel 13, nothing against Channel 13, but they're watching it on a loop 24-7 and, and it's, mm. that is anxiety producing. Absolutely. So turning that TV off and giving yourself some downtime before bedtime, really helpful. Maybe a little lavender oil. Oh, that would be nice. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. The next one... I'm, I am on a mission to get my parents to do for me, um, preserving your life story. So many opportunities right now to do that, too. There are companies that do it or just the books that they can write like journals in. Yes. Um, I just think it's a wonderful idea because, unfortunately, those of us that have aging parents don't always think about the um, questions that we might think about later that we want to know about, right? Exactly. Uh, we have in my family, my uh, mom's brothers were, a number of them were in World War II. And there were mm. a lot of stories uh, that were passed on that, I hate to say it, as I'm getting older, I'm starting to get fuzzy on the details. And sure. I wish we had videotaped them or written mm. those stories down and so that we can pass them on to the next generation because unfortunately you know our our world war ii vets there's not a whole lot of them right. left and and that's a history we need to remember we need to remember it and i think it's if anyone's ever gone on honor flight or talked to any of the uh, guardians that went with them i think that is what they come away with are just some of the memories that they share Absolutely. So if they're in your family, do write them down. Get them videotaped, like Jennifer said, something so that you have those memories. And you may think, well, I don't have anything to write down. I don't have, you know, this big glorious past that that anybody's going to want to know about. No, your family really does. Mm. Um, And it can be the... Uh, you may consider it mundane, um, but your kids will not. And there are wonderful things to be able to pass on to your children, to your grandchildren, um, and that let that legacy live on. It's it's one of my favorite things of, of going into do assessments is hearing people's stories and saying, oh my gosh, you know, uh, the things that you've seen and the things that you've gone through are amazing. And those stories really do need to be written down. And I think sometimes I know just talking to residents at Buena Vida, that's one of my favorite parts of my job is just being able to spend time with them and hear some of their stories. And I think sometimes seniors feel like, you know, you start hearing about that invisible time or the you're not seen as much Um, most of us care so much for our seniors and want to know your stories so don't feel like they're not important like Jennifer said even if you think they're mundane or not not important it's just so interesting to hear what you've done where you came from and there is so much wisdom Mm -hmm. in that and and you know why do we study history so that we don't repeat it Um, but there are also a lot of things that we 
so want to repeat. There are, right. are lessons to be learned. And um, I think, you know, some, some of the stories that I have heard have helped um, embolden me to, to be better, to do better, to stand up and speak out. Um, and, and those mm-hmm. stories help that younger generation do just that. Absolutely. So please, yes. you really think about getting one of those books or, or hiring a company to go in and, and do that video because what a wonderful, amazing gift that is to give on. Yep. Number 10. This is interesting too to me because just like the, the term self-care, um, mm. being authentic is not something We didn't that, grow up with that. No. No, and I thought be authentic. When I first started hearing that term, um, probably in the last 10 years, Mm -hmm. I thought, well, I am authentic. I'm kind of an open book. There's, I don't need to be more authentic. But then I did a little, I did a, um, through WeVenture, we did the Athena program. Right. And they talked about being authentic. And I found myself in a group. And and as we were talking about things, and it was a, it was a personal conversation, I went towards humor. Oh, I goofed yes. around. To, to relieve some of the stress or the thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. And and one of the very next person that went dove deep and, and, and really shared a personal moment in her life. And I thought, oh my gosh, she was authentic. I, I was not I, at all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go there. <clears throat> and you know, I, I think we've been taught, um, the younger generations are doing better with this than we did. Hmm. We were taught um, to keep a lot in keep and not in, to don't share. Say, don't say anything. Exactly. And, and there is a lot of freedom in being authentic. And putting putting yourself out there. And when we do that, we allow other people to be authentic. Right. They're more more willing or more apt to do that. Because how many people share the same experiences that we have? And, and maybe we've been holding it in. But then I heard that woman in the group share something very mm-hmm. personal. And it allowed the rest of the group to open up and talk about an experience that was similar to that. And, and we all shared different variations of, of a similar experience and how op- you know how freeing that was for everybody in that whole group I'm trying to think um, you know when you're new somewhere um, like a Buena Vida resident coming in if they're new they're probably less apt to open up and maybe be authentic but what have you've got to lose and like Jennifer said maybe if you just said something that you might have been afraid to say before you say that you say and maybe they really grasp onto that and they respond exactly. more openly themselves. So Being, I think that's really, I think it's hard to do that, but one step at a time. Exactly. You know, when, especially when we have not been programmed to do that, mm-hmm. I think it's a little hard. It's, it's, it feels very brave to be able to do that. Um, but yeah. then when we do, it's amazing how many people respond so positively to it. I think they might have more respect if someone's sharing something that maybe they're a little timid to do to see the reaction, but just putting yourself out there is a good thing. Exactly, exactly. So the next thing on our list is one thing that I love, and I love to share that with clients of Seniors Helping Seniors. Join a club. Hmm. Do you have good clubs point. at Buena Vida? that people can do like a walk-in club or we do but I'm thinking of just in this area the senior centers oh the senior centers the, are fabulous. and I know Palm Bay and Wickham and Suntree and Rockledge they have these wonderful opportunities whether you want to play bingo or you want to um, play pool they have um exercise uh, Buena Vida sponsors uh, Shelly Anderson's yoga and we go in there and we bring water. But I'm telling you what, those classes are up to about 50 people now. Oh, wow. That's a and great And you talk class. about a club. Wow. They are having a blast. And it's an hour. See, there you, and this, there's a club for everyone. Right. Really. I, I happen to love a 55-plus club of Satellite Beach. Oh. They're a wonderful group. I think they've got, I went to their uh, holiday uh, year-end celebration, and they've got over 500 members now. And you don't have to be from Satellite Beach, um, but they often meet over at the Schechter Center in Satellite. And there, there are clubs within the club 
Like yes, you said, I'm sure. walking, right. mahjong, cards, just games, fishing. They have a Dancing. travel club. You know, what a great thing. If you're a senior and you're alone and you want to still travel, but you don't want to travel alone, you know, they're, Chris Morris at Helping Seniors Travel Club, he can hook you up. Um, they have little bus trips at the 55 mm-hmm. plus club that you can go on and, and everybody Senior goes out together. As well. So and, exactly. I think just there's so many do things. a little research on that and find some different clubs that maybe you didn't know about and and that that fit what you what your interests and hobbies are and being able to get out there and be more social and what a wonderful thing that does for us you know instead of being closed in being able to get out and spend time with people that have similar interests and hobbies right it kind of goes with learn something new that might not be a new thing but you're doing it with new people yes putting so those two there. can go together well, we already talked about reading a book. The next one uh, is a little bit of homework, but it's an amazing thing. Start a gratitude journal. I love that. And I've started one several years, and then I don't continue it. So that's We're, we're all so. guilty of that. So this will be something that we can reinstitute. I did a gratitude journal. A, a very dear friend of mine invited me to a party. Um, and it was attitude of gratitude. Mm. That whole the whole theme of the party was that. And she gave us little journals to go home with. And um, what a beautiful thing that is! Because a lot of times, and I tell my kids this all the time, it's mindset. Absolutely, I have to do this. No, you don't have to. You get to. Yep. I heard that about going to work one day, and I sometimes don't want to get out of bed and don't want to go get a go get dressed to go to work. And then you. That's what this, um, I heard on the radio as well, you know, turn it around. You get to go to work. You get to get up. Exactly. You I have a I, home to get breakfast in. Yeah, I have a house that I have to clean. That's great. I, I get to, I get to clean because I do have a house. So that's, that's amazing. I have a car that I get to drive to work with. And, in the traffic. Yes. Right. So yes, <laughs> it's all turning it around. And if you don't have a journal, I heard something, um, probably saw it on one of the social medias but it's a gratitude slip of paper every day put it in a jar oh how nice and if you you wouldn't even have to do it every day if you forgot but you could continually put these little things when something comes across your mind put them in a jar and then at the end of the year read each of those things and maybe you date them maybe you don't but what a an amazing feeling to read these little slips of gratitude and oh, start your year idea. off with a great or, or when you're having a bad day you know because we all have right. bad days we have Absolutely. those days when we're just down or we're not feeling it <clears throat> to get that jar out and read a couple of the things that right. we've been uh, oh that's right all right things aren't so bad <laughs> I get to do this all just happened things. last week and look at how excited I got right exactly yeah. so what a what a wonderful idea all right so yeah, I'm sure we all have something in our house you know a little Strips of paper, use the junk mail <laughs> right on the we back got of the lots junk of that. Mail. Put it in a jar. There you go. Peanut butter jar. Hey, absolutely. So after that, we have spend more time outside, which we talked a little bit about you know, when we were taking a walk, but uh, or you mentioned earlier of getting outside in the grass, but spending time outside, I feel like as we get older, we naturally, sadly, mm-hmm. just don't do anymore. <clears throat> My dad right now is homebound. And whenever I'm down there, I just want him to be outside, just getting some fresh air. Because just being in a home, it just is stifling sometimes. You walk in there and maybe it's warm, maybe it's just kind of dark. And I just think it's so important for us to get outside, see the sunshine, breathe some of that fresh air, and that can change your attitude. Absolutely. Absolutely. I heard a, a, I think it was on a radio show too, where they talked about how good the morning sun is for you and Mm. to take your cup of coffee and go out onto the porch and get that morning sun and spend that little bit of time out in the fresh air. And so I've been trying to institute that. Now, Mm -hmm. sometimes I get up too early. It's too dark out. I'm not going out with the mosquitoes, but (laughs) it's Florida. But getting out uh, in the morning really does help me have a Mm -hmm. better attitude for the rest of the day. Even walking and getting my paper in the morning. Yes, I'm old. I still get a newspaper. (laughs) But I go down the driveway and 
the sun has just come up and so you're walking down the sidewalk and just looking around taking a big deep breath of air I mean I love it that is a great thing so, yeah. intentional that's what we have to be intentionally getting outside <clears throat> and and maybe that's the cup of coffee or taking mm-hmm. a walk down to the driveway even if you don't get the paper <laughs> still <laughs> just getting out into the sunshine um, and spending some more time outside Next up on our list is to volunteer. So many opportunities. And I bet you have places just within Buena Vida that that people can volunteer. We do. We have a lot of residents that volunteer inside the compound. Um, Whether it's the the activity center, we do a thrift store once a month. And the ladies put it all together and they are there ringing the cash register and all kinds of things. We have a country store where we have residents that work three hours a week and they just get to see everybody that comes in there. There's just a, there's gardening. I mean, you name it, you can find something to volunteer. And it's so many more. And that's what we, we at Seniors Helping Seniors, we look for the heart of a volunteer who doesn't mind getting paid. So a lot of people think that, that, um, Seniors Helping Seniors as a nonprofit, uh, but we're not. We are a home yep. care company, and we actually hire our seniors to go out and help other seniors. So it's it's like a volunteer position, but they do get paid for it, and it helps keep them busy, sure, and um, feeling really good about what they're doing. So that's a wonderful thing. Um, and I know helping seniors of Brevard County, the nonprofit, putting that hat mm-hmm. back on, helping seniors is always looking for volunteers too. Volunteers to help with the car raffle, but also volunteers, we would love to be able to have them make phone calls to some of our homebound people in in Brevard County, replicate what Satellite Beach is doing with their Stop By and Say Hi program. Um, During COVID, they they just made phone calls. And what a great thing to be able to reach out to someone and and talk Mm -hmm. to a homebound senior for a little while. It's great for them. And it's great for you as a volunteer, you know, helping, helping others you really end up helping yourself as well. Oh, absolutely. You always come away feeling better than when you went. Absolutely. And you think you're doing it for someone else, but you're the one that's going to benefit from it. And I think in our community, whether it's nonprofits, it's the hospitals, it's there are just so many opportunities. And I don't know, would 211 give that information of different places? I oh, mean, I'm what sure 211 would, would be a good resource for that. <laughs> or, or you can contact Helping Seniors, and I'm sure they would... Um, you know, be able to hook you up with a, mm-hmm. a couple of the nonprofits that are senior related. Um, but there are so many nonprofits here in Brevard County that yeah. you can find one that speaks to you, animal related, music related. Um, there are so many wonderful organizations to get involved with. Now, the last one on our list, Terry, and here's where I'm going to put you on the spot, mm. is to share <clears throat> your goals. So sharing them um, you know, for our younger generation, putting them out on social media or sharing with a friend, telling a family member what your goal is kind of makes you more accountable of, of what you're going to do for 2024. Mm-hmm. So all of the things that we've talked about this afternoon, what, what goal would you like to share with us for 2024? You are putting me on the spot. I am putting her on the spot. Um, I'm going to talk about 2023 because I I had a goal that um, I wanted to have a group of women that would get together and be authentic and share different stories and um, just do certain things. And it was so wonderful. I did it with a girlfriend and we had 20 women that were coming to our home on a weekly basis. Um, it was what I didn't see here in Brevard when I got here nine years ago and so um, that was something that I was so excited about and it continues on this year Um, but I really haven't set a goal Um, my goal is to have my children have babies but um, I want to be a (laughs) grandmother I don't think you can do anything about that (laughs) well I was told this week thank you very much that it's not about me so that would be my goal that I really want if we're going to be real authentic and um, tell the truth but um as far as myself, you know, we've had some health issues this year, and um, we're just so grateful to be where we are, to be here, and just to, um, our goal would just be to continue this blessed life that we have. Awesome. Wonderful. And I, and I love your 2023 goal, and, that, mm-hmm. and then you made it happen. It, it happened. 
That's wonderful. That's wonderful. How about you? I knew you were going to. I I knew that was going to (laughs) happen. So I. You know, we're, I'm looking at 2024, um, and the ladies in my office, we've been talking about this. We talk about self-care, mm-hmm. um, but I think, especially my generation, we weren't programmed to do that. So I think we're really going to institute that um, and, and really try to promote uh, you know, our, our own health and priorities, mm-hmm. especially with caregivers. If you are a family caregiver, you know you prioritize everybody else first. Right. And Going back to where we started. Yeah. You have to prioritize yourself because you can't take care of everyone if you don't take care of yourself. So taking time out for yourself, taking your time, you know, time to move more, eat healthy, get some, some better rest. So that's, that's my goal is way better self-care than I have been doing so that I can continue to work with my seniors and, and help my family and, and be there for everyone else. You know, I love to do that, but I have to be able to take care of myself first. That's right. And yeah. we're in that sandwich generation. Yes. Jennifer and I both have children and then we have parents. And I think it's probably the time right now where we're least likely to take care of ourselves. Um, But seniors, it's your time. And it's this list was a great list that Jennifer created. And I will tell you that take some of those nuggets and take care of yourself. Absolutely. And part of the or one of the ways that you can take care of yourself is by coming out to our January 25th uh, Start Smart Seminar put on by Care Plus and Omni Healthcare at the Senior Resource Center. Again, that's January 25th from 11 to 1230 with a special presentation um, about advances in memory care and a dementia live simulation. So come on out to that and take care of yourself that way. Um, you can come out January 2nd to Comer Fuego and have some delicious food and be social with us uh, upstairs at the Senior Resource Center. And I encourage everyone to keep your eyes out on the uh, Senior the Helping Seniors newsletter, which again is tucked neatly inside the Senior Scene magazine for more information, more resources, um, and as we go through 2024, planning for a better future, planning for um, more information um, and resources to help us have a healthy 2024. And as we we log off, John Harper, um, John Harper, do you have a, a... resolution that you would like to share with us it probably is the same one every year and like so many other people you know it's always uh, something like lose weight or whatever but mine is to uh, stay healthy and uh, smile a lot and just have fun absolutely smile a lot joyful yeah very good I love it I love it Jim Votro gonna put you on the spot too mister yes (laughs) What would you like to share for your 2024? We're going to put you on the spot. I'd like to share the extra 25 pounds I put on during Christmas with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> if it was only that easy. I wish it was that easy. I know. All I got for Christmas was fat. <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, that was one of one of, um, uh, one of the radio stations that I used to listen to. Um, the the lady said that was her... her um, Solution for wrinkles. Being fat? Yes. Yeah, well, that will do it, too. There you go. So that took care of her wrinkles. So there's a positive (laughs) spin on anything. (laughs) We're going to be more joyful in 2024. Well, on behalf of Helping Seniors of Brevard County, this is Jennifer from Seniors Helping Seniors and Terry Brandt from Buena Vida Estates. Thank you, Terry, for being with us. Thank you, Jennifer. And we wish everyone a very happy and healthy 2024. Thank you, Jennifer Barton. Appreciate it. Job well done. You've been listening to Helping Seniors of Brevard, the for the show for and about seniors, and you can hear it every Wednesday from twelve noon to one o'clock, right here on ninety point three FM.